Hello everybody and welcome back to Turning Tuesday. In this episode, we start in a bit of a weird position because it is time to sort out my sandpaper organization. It's a mess and it is an absolute nightmare to go through. So we're gonna make a sandpaper rack. This is gonna make up a two part video and yeah, let's get going. So in this video, we are gonna make the, obviously the round part of the sandpaper rack. And that is going to be a big long spindle with thinner sections to hold the sandpaper and then kind of fatter sections on it to stop them sliding across the whole bar. There's also going to be a join in the middle of it because my lathe isn't long enough to accommodate the length of this. And then there's gonna be some like end details on it as well. So it should be interesting getting into some spindle turning again. The second part of this video is gonna be focused on making the, um, the thing that holds the spindle in place. And yes, don't worry. I am going to dovetail it. Okay, so just going to get this round to begin with and then we'll start drawing the lines on it. This is where I wish that I picked up that longer tool rest, isn't it? And yes. The mask still smells of this stuff. Right, so I start marking everything out and I'm gonna begin from the join in the middle. Right, so I cut this half oversized to allow myself extra room to put the details on the end but I've ended up getting a lot more material on the end than I thought, so I'm gonna scrape all this off and shift it up a bit so that I can get a larger tenon on the end here. All right, so the basic idea of this, these sections need to be 25 millimeters in diameter and these sections need to be 45 in diameter. And then there needs to be a little bit on the end there and then the dome on this end. So. It's not particularly exciting stuff. I think it will look cooler in a time lapse just seeing stuff dug out of this. So that is what we're gonna do. All right, so I have got the majority of it there, a little 10 millimeter tenon on the end of it. And that join is gonna be hidden underneath another one of these. So I'm gonna make one of those that's loose. And then when I join the two halves together, that will slide over the join and you'll never see the shoulder. One divider there, and I'm just halfway through shaping the, um, the, the um, mushroom bit on the end. But before I do that, I'll give it a quick sand and then uh, yeah, go for it. Lovely. Okay, that went well. Just pair off the little nipple left over on the end and I'll give that a quick sand later. Sanding a sanding rack, wow. Now as for the other component that this is due to join onto, I would love to drill the mortise out on the lathe, but I pretty much maxed out the distance between the centers with this block and it's definitely not gonna be able to fit a drill bit on the end of it as well. So I am just going to do this one by eye. I'm sure a lot of you will just say, Matt, why don't you do this on the pillar drill? I don't have a vice that will hold it upright, but I'm pretty confident I can do it like this. There we go. Lovely fit. So now this part can go on the lathe. And I guess I've just got to make sure I don't put too much pressure on the tailstock because I don't really want to split that hole, or should I say split the entire component. All right, so I'm approaching the final finishing, final finishing of this one. Uh, so things I need to make sure, the diameter of this ends up being exactly the same as this. So when I bore the, 
thing that goes around it, I can make it a consistent diameter inside. Uh, the other thing that I've had a bit of a stupid on is I accidentally made the diameter of that too small by about a millimeter, which you won't really notice when it's together, but I know it's wrong, but I can't be asked to fix it. So there we go. I'm gonna sand this now and then finish up this bit, part off that, and then see if it's locked together. Well, that's incredibly challenging to get two domes to look the same. <laughs> that is nowhere near. Oh dear. Right, let's get this little bit off the end and then I need to turn the joining hidden, or should I say the sleeve that goes over the join. I don't know what we're calling it at this point. But yes, I definitely need to work on getting things more consistent when turning. That is just terrible. That is terrible. But... <coughs> The fit is good, which is nice. So now let's figure out how to do that bit. So in an ideal world, what I would have done is made this diameter a nice round number, such as 20, 25, 30, so that then when I make a sleeve, I could just drill out the center using a force and a bit. However, I decided to try and make this 25, but then accidentally made it 24, and then sanded it afterwards, so now it is 23. So when I make the sleeve to fit over it, I'm gonna have to hollow it out with something to create that internal diameter. And even better, the gripper jaws that I was hoping, come on, to hold this with, are not the right diameter. They don't quite close enough to clamp this. So I am going to have to use the pen jaws for this job. I'm gonna turn it round first and it's not gonna be a whole lot of work to try and get that center out, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm pretty sure these will do the job. I think they will, I don't know. All right, so upon testing the fit on one of my current divider things, this section here, <laughs> of course, got a bit too small, but I've got a nice section here that is the exact diameter I want. So if I part it off there, get rid of this bit, and then I'll start boring out that bit to become my sleeve. So then in theory, if I do that, tighten it down, then I can measure the bore using these ends of the calipers, and that should be a nice tight fit around here, hopefully. I'm gonna keep saying hopefully because it means nothing is certain and therefore you can't be disappointed in it. Now I've just had a thought, if I keep doing that, then I've got no idea how big the diameter is gonna be on the other side when I part this off. So I think I need to part this off first and there, Oh, there's a flat spot on that still. No, no, I'll make that the back. Right, we're off. Put the, that side. Oh, it's like engineering, isn't it? Be careful not to crush it. Is this safe? I think that's safe. Just we'll give it just a little bit more. Yeah, be fine. Oh, it's off centre! Oh, Lord. Right, and here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could have just bought a longer lathe, but that is satisfying. That is very satisfying. So essentially, if you can't already tell by this point, the idea of this is to put various sandpapers on here. That'll all slot together with that internal divider on it. That's all right, providing the sandpaper behaves itself like this. Now we'll pop a little bit of glue on it, a little bit inside the mortise, and then a bit round the shoulder as well. Hopefully this won't be as tight as it was on the mallet this time. Cool. And then I've just got to get the distance between here and here correct and shift that sleeve accordingly. Uh-oh, it's got very tight. The only other thing is making sure the grain direction is the same. So it kind of, you can't really see that join at all. So we've got the long straight grain here, carrying right across, and then the crown cut patterns on that face. And I'll just do that by twisting it, as well as sorting it out on the sleeve as well. Right, and there we go. That is it for Turning Tuesday this week. 
plenty of things that I definitely need to improve upon. Getting things straight, getting things symmetrical. I've definitely uncovered even more weak points when it comes to spindle turning or just turning in general. But yeah, keep in mind, this is only part one of this project. There will be a part two where I'm making the frame that holds this thing. And then finally, I'll have sorted out that blooming mess behind there. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I promise I'm not being threatening by doing this. But yeah, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.